Lisbon is Portugal's beautiful coastal capital city and one of the most southern capitals in Europe. Its location and subtropical Mediterranean climate was certainly calling us for a mid-October break. Although visiting during this shoulder season does have some downsides, in this video we'll share with you some of the best seafood we could find, trendy shopping districts, river walks, famous yellow streetcars, pastel pastries, pastel vistas, and yes, what happens when you visit Europe's most beautiful palace and you can't quite actually see it. If you're new here, then welcome. We make travel movies from around the world, hoping you might just find your next holiday inspiration. This is Suitcase Monkey, spending four sunny and rainy days in Lisbon. We arrived late morning into Lisbon's main airport and within two hours had arrived at our hotel. It was nothing if not modern and chic and with these padded walls I'd either booked ourselves into a comfy stay or a sex dungeon. With little time to be certain we dropped our bags and headed towards Alfama, the city's oldest and most charming neighborhood. Originally called home by fishermen and dock workers, today its artistic, historic side still shines through. This is one of Lisbon's most hilly areas, which is saying something, so be prepared for winding cobbled streets and stairs taking you on a maze-like journey in every direction. By the late afternoon, we'd moved into Baixa. This neighborhood is where all the action is. Restaurants, monuments, tourist attractions, cafes and shops. It's the heart of modern Lisbon life. There was even this excitable march going on. Now, at the time, I had no idea what these people were marching for, but I was pretty sure it had something to do with Alan Sugar. Surprisingly, most of this area was completely rebuilt after a devastating earthquake in 1755. As you can see here, rebuilding the city on a new grid-like system was totally at odds with the Alfama district we'd just passed through. That makes these buildings some of the oldest examples of earthquake-resistant construction in the world today. One of the most unique structures in Lisbon is the Santa Justa lift. Built in 1900, what started as an innovative form of public transport has since become a major tourist attraction and to ride one with a queue of up to 45 minutes. The views though are worth the elevation gain and there is actually a travel hack that allows you to skip all of that wait time. I'm gonna follow up this video with a concise travel guide with tips such as that queue jump, getting around and where best to stay. So I'll link that video here once it's finished. For once, Time Out Market isn't just another place with the brand name randomly attached. In 2014, Time Out Portugal gathered all their best reviewed restaurants under one roof, literally bringing the magazine to life. We both really enjoyed this tasty seafood soup and then we rolled the dice on this octopus hot dog. Now it ultimately turned out to be a slightly odd combination, but the octopus itself was incredibly soft and succulent. With our stomachs full, we took the metro back to our hotel. Transport around Lisbon had been incredibly easy so far. Before we'd even arrived in Portugal, we'd purchased the Lisbon card, which gave us unlimited travel on all local trams, buses and metro lines, along with free access to 39 attractions. So at the airport, instead of joining this queue to buy a ticket, we joined this queue. And so far on day one, it also gave us free access to this rooftop view and the ride in the Santa Justa lift. 
We purchased the Lisbon card through today's sponsor, Get Your Guide, and I'll link it at the top of this video's description and pinned comment. More than just getting one convenient ticket for everything, Get Your Guide also packages great tour guided trips all over the world. For Lisbon specifically, the trip I would recommend is the one to Sintra. You'll see later in this video that a day trip here is jam packed, so having private transport that takes you door to door takes hours off traveling and will also give you a top level tour guide. Or if you'd rather book it bespoke, as we did, it means you don't have to wait and buy tickets on arrival, as these people are doing here, and instead we just walk straight up to the entrance. Get Your Guide has become one of the first places I look to when checking out a new city for inspiration. A quick search for Lisbon brings up everything from aquarium tickets to local cooking classes and that incredibly convenient Lisbon card. Again, please click the link in the description to support travel vlogs like this and find out where your next trip might take you. One of our favorite breakfasts was found in Chiado, an important cultural and commercial area known for luxury shopping, theaters, and museums. Café Brasileia is one of Lisbon's oldest and most famous. It began life as a Brazilian coffee trader and became a meeting point for poets and intellectuals, and now people like me also. What mattered most though for this morning was that it was easily the best coffee we'd had so far and the food met our high expectations with this sweet toast and mixed platter. A short bus ride from Chiado is LX Factory. Once a large industrial area, it's been reimagined as a self-contained trendy village, focusing on independent fashion, art, music, and literature. This bridge is one of Lisbon's largest, most recognizable landmarks. Opening in the 60s, its color makes for an easy comparison to the Golden Gate, but it was actually built by the same consortium behind the Bay Bridge, also in San Francisco. Translated into English, its name is 25th of April Bridge, which marks the date of the Portuguese Carnation Revolution. The 25th of April is admittedly an odd name for a bridge, but it was still ultimately better than calling it Tuesday. One error we did make was visiting this area of Belay on a Monday, as most attractions turned out to be closed. Around all of Lisbon, Monday is the most likely day that things will be shut, but specifically here, that meant half of the sites on our list would be outside viewing only. No trip to Lisbon is complete without a visit to Pastéis du Belay. And that's because this is the birthplace of the famous Pastel de Nata. The story goes that following the closure of all convents and monasteries in the 1830s, one entrepreneurial monk started selling sweet pastries to make ends meet. This unique recipe quickly became the talk of the town and now Portugal's most popular food export. Throughout our whole time in Lisbon, we had four different Pastéis de Nata, and these were definitely the best with a perfect crisp to the sweet custard. 
In addition, both the sausage puff pastry and muffin we ordered were both really light and fluffy. The atmosphere was admittedly a little hectic, but the large dining rooms meant we were seated pretty quickly. The prices were also very reasonable, especially considering the cafe's fame, with all of this coming to just 10 euros. Looking back, the food was one of the best things about Lisbon. For dinner, we struck gold when one of you lovely people suggested this small seafood restaurant. We ordered these sardine tacos, Peruvian ceviche, soft shell crab burger, tuna steak and linguine nero with scallops. This feast would set us up nicely for the early morning. And that's because tomorrow we'd be leaving central Lisbon to visit Sintra, a charming town 45 minutes west by train. We'd originally planned Sintra to happen in two days time. However, the weather forecast was looking terrible. So we crossed our fingers and hoped that tomorrow's weather would be better. It wasn't. This 10th century castle sits atop one of the many peaks in the Sintra Hills. Taking the bus from Sintra Station, it's one stop before the main attraction of Piena Palace, so is a good en route destination. On a better weather day, the 400 meter high views of the main town of Sintra below would be amazing, and it offers the clearest views of the palace itself. Despite the weather, in this instance, the fog actually kinda complemented the atmosphere to these ruins. That complementary weather aspect was not so easily found at Piena Palace, given that we couldn't actually see most of it. Piena Palace in Sintra was the thing I was most looking forward to on this trip. On better days, this unique residence with its 360 degree views and neighboring gardens would have been a marvel to wander through. So I don't want these shots to put people off from visiting, but our experience was obviously marred. The history of this site dates back to the 12th century with it originally being a monastery. But it was 1838 when King Ferdinand II took a shine to the region, started renovations and turned this home into the palace you see today. Again, I'll cover more practical info in the follow-up Lisbon Tips video, but if you're short on time, my personal hot take is to spend less time in the residence itself and instead to explore its panoramas, majesty and gardens from the outside. Just only when it doesn't look like this. Being so high up and surrounded by hills, Piena Palace can live in its own microclimate. The great news then is that even if the weather isn't great up here, 500 meters below, the town of Sintra itself was a big highlight in all of our time here. The soundproof windows weren't the only things that impressed us with our hotel. 
Its location was perfectly central to most attractions, without being on a busy high street. The station to Sintra was five minutes away, as was the metro line to the airport. On our final morning, it turned out that Tram 28 was also a few minutes walk away. The number 28 is one of the last remaining historic tram routes in Lisbon. The twisting, steep, narrow pathways that it carves just isn't suitable for modern transportation. Although you will see locals on board, it has become somewhat of a tourist magnet, allowing you to catch a glimpse of what the commute might have felt like 100 years ago. During our whole time here, we'd constantly been impressed with how Lisbon has turned tiling into an art form. They are everywhere. So with that, I uttered a sentence that I never thought I'd say. Let's go to the Tile Museum. Upon entry, after seeing some single tiles on the walls, I feared I had walked into the Simpsons Box Factory tour. But it was at this room where I saw that that wasn't the case. It turns out the Tile Museum might as well be an art gallery, but instead of art being stuck within a picture frame, it was the entire wall that was the canvas. In hindsight, this thinking outside the frame had perfectly represented our trip. Lisbon is an incredibly unique European city, with so many sights and experiences that can only be found here. Although this is the end of the video, it wasn't the end of our trip. Tomorrow we'd be taking a flight to Madeira, one of Portugal's many islands. If you'd like to see how that turned out, please hit the like button, subscribe, comment, or watch it now if you're living in the future. Please do keep an eye out for the Lisbon Tips video coming soon, and thank you to Get Your Guide for sponsoring this video. I'll link all the tours and tickets in the description, and as ever, thanks for watching, Suitcase Monkey.